Hi, welcome back to our weekly lecture. This is our sixth lecture together. And today I'll we'll be talking about membrane structure and its function. So we know that our cells have um, cell membranes which protects it from other non-living boundary in our um, body or in animal's body. And um, our cell membrane also has another name which calls the plasma membrane. We see the plasma membrane is the boundary that separates living cell from its non-living boundary. And the plasma membrane exhibits something called selective permeability which means that it will only allow some substances to cross into our membrane more than the others. Um, you can think of it this way as that um, our cells, they don't want everything to cross in, to like come into our cells. So it only wants very specific things to come in. And um, the selective permeability will allow our cells to do so, to select only the things that our cells want to come into our cells. And phospholipid is something that mainly makes up our um, plasma membrane. It is arranged in a bilayer way, and um, this bilayer makes up the basic fabric of the plasma membrane. Why is it a bilayer? Because um, as we can see, one of this little head and two tails, it makes up one phospholipid. And this is a model of the plasma membrane. We can see it is arranged in a way such that it has two layers, tails to tails, and then heads on the outside. So we say that it makes up a bilayer. Um, the three key words that um, I want you guys to get familiar with the plasma membrane are phospholipids, cholesterol, and protein channel. I'll be explaining um, each one of these in the next few slides. So in summary, our, the plasma membrane is basically just our cell membrane. It has selective permeability only. It won't want certain things to cross in. And um, if you look at this picture, this is the outside of the cell. This is the inside of the cell. If you were to cross it, the thing either has to cross through um, the phospholipid bilayer or it has to cross through these proteins or the protein channel right here. So what is a phospholipid? Um, a phospholipid is one type of lipid. So um, I've talked about lipid as one of the macromolecules from lecture two, I believe. And the phospholipids are the most abundant lipid in the plasma membrane because it is what the plasma membrane is mainly made up of. And one phospholipid is made up of one head, which is the phosphate groups and its attachment, and two tails, which are the two fatty acids. We said that the two tails are hydrophobic, hydrophobic, which means it fears water. It does not like water. And um, the one phosphate group, the head, it is hydrophilic, hydrophilic, which means it likes water. One way that I used to remember this is that I know if you have a phobia on something, that means you have like a fear on something, and hydro means water, so hydrophobic means a fear of water. And the two tails are hydrophobic. They do not like water. And the head is what that likes water. And this is why when fossil lipids are added to water, they, are assemb they, assemble, they assemble themselves in a bilayer way such that um, the head, the hydrophilic head, the head that holds likes water, is always facing the water or encountering the water. You see the head being outside on the two outside layers. With um, the hydrophobic tails, the tails that don't like water is pointing toward the interior of the bilayer. This way, um, the head is always what that encounters water, and the tail is what's always inside who um, wouldn't encounter the water because it is folded inside. It has two layers. So um, you can think of the two, um, the two head, the two layers of head as two pieces of bread in the sandwich and the two the tails the tails as the four tails one two three four the four tails as either the lettuce the ham the cheese in our sandwich so we know the two pieces of bread will always be outside will always be encountering water and the hydrophobic tail will always be inside there is one very important concept for our phospho, sorry, for our plasma membrane um, that I really want you guys to know. It is called the fluid mosaic model and the membrane movement. 
So basically what the fluid mosaic model is, is that it states, um, it states that a membrane is a fluid structure with mosaic of various proteins embedded in it. It might sound pretty confusing, pretty complex, but in simple terms, it really just means that our plasma membrane or the plasma membrane, it is a fluid, it is in a fluid state, which means it can move with proteins embedded in it, with proteins in it. As we can see looking back um, in this picture or this picture, we see those proteins, those blue, the blue things are the proteins. We see these proteins embedded in our phospholipid bilayer, and that's what I meant by um, with proteins embedded in it. Um, the phospholipids and the plasma membrane can move within the bilayer, which means these membrane, these uh, these phospholipids can shift up and down, left and right. It can move for a bit, and um, the membrane it must be fluid in order for it to work properly. So usually, our plasma membrane is um, about as fluid as salad oil. And here is a video that um, I feel like it shows the phospholipids, the cholesterol, the protein channels, and um, our plasma member in general in a very great way. And yeah, we can watch it together. Between the living machinery of the inner cell and the harsh conditions of the outside world stands the cell's plasma membrane. As crucial as this barrier is, it's surprisingly flexible. Push it and watch it move poke hard enough and it might break and begin to regroup. The lipid molecules of the membrane naturally assemble in a double layer because their tails repel water. So we can see this is the head that likes water, the hydrophilic head, and that's the hydrophobic tail. It's always voted inside. As their heads attract it, throw in some cholesterol and a few carbohydrates and you have the basic structure of a plasma membrane. Within these lipid molecules, we also find different proteins which do various things for the cell. And we can see this plasma membrane, it's in a fluid state, it's moving, and um, these phospholipids, they can shift up and down in order for our plasma membrane to be moving. For instance, they receive signals from the world outside, or they transport nutrients and waste. So nature composes the membrane with a combination or mosaic of different lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. And these molecules are not stationary. They constantly move within the structure, fluidly changing their positions. The survival of all life rests on this veil of material. A supple membrane, just two molecules thick. Between the living machine. So now looking back, we have a better understanding of what the fluid mosaic model is and um, how our plasma membrane will be able to move around. And we can see that um, it is a very fluid structure and um, in order for things to pass through, it's got to be moving in order for it to work. And um, cholesterol is the second thing that I want you guys to be familiar be familiar with our plasma membrane. It is another lipid composed of four fused carbon rings, and it is found alongside phospholipids in the core of the membrane. And um, we can see the picture right here. This is the cholesterol. This yellow thing is the cholesterol, and they they're usually found in the core of the membrane. And um, the function of cholesterol is that it has different effects on membrane fluidity as temperature changes. So when our plasma membrane encounters warm temperatures, such as 37 degrees Celsius, which is roughly around um, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, um, anywhere past that, 37, 38, 39, 40 degrees Celsius, and as it gets hotter, we know that um, our membrane tends to get more fluid in a way. And this is when our cholesterol started to um, started to function, and um, it will restrain movement of phospholipids to make sure that our our um, our membrane is not that fluid. 
and when it encounters cool temperatures and it maintains fluidity by preventing tight packing because when we know that um, once it's too cold, our membrane will not be as likely to move or has like a giant movement or be as fluid as it used to be when it's at the hot, when it's at a warmer temperature, which means that there might be tight packing and it might be like not moving as much. So in order to prevent this, our cholesterol will function again at cool temperatures in order to prevent this tight packing. If we were to look back um, in this picture, these yellow things, they are our cholesterol. And that's our phospholipid. That is our third thing that I want to introduce, which is the protein channel. Why do we need those protein channels? Protein channels are also called integral membrane proteins. And since I've mentioned earlier, the plasma membrane has something called selective permeability. It is selectively permeable. It means that it only wants specific molecules to pass in. Therefore, we need something to um, help those other molecules to get into our cells, right? So we know that our plasma membrane will only allow hydrophobic molecules, which means they're nonpolar, and small polar molecules to diffuse through this phospholipid bilayer. So if our molecule that, okay, for example, if it is a, um, you've been an oxygen molecule, then it will be able to diffuse through because it is nonpolar, it does not have a charge. Or if it's like a super small polar molecule, it might be able to diffuse through this phospholipid bilayer and eventually get into our inside cell. So like if you imagine this is outside a cell, that's inside a cell. And if you wanna go through this way without encountering the protein channels, and if you wanna just diffuse through hydrophobic molecules, the nonpolar molecules, or the small polar molecules can simply just like this through. And, um, but however, what do we do when we have those bigger molecules, such as um, the bigger hydrophilic molecules, which means the bigger polar molecules, what do we do? If they want to get into our cells, if they have essential needs to get into our cells, what do we do? And this is where our integral membrane proteins come into place. They enable ions, which means polar molecules and large polar molecules to pass through the membrane. So if there's like a very large polar molecule that wants to get into our cells right now, and this is outside the cell, that's inside the cell, it will be right here. It will go through this protein channel, which is also the integral membrane protein. It will diffuse through this protein channel and eventually get into our cells. And one type of integral protein, integral membrane protein, is called a transmembrane protein. Uh, the transmembrane protein are the ones that span the whole membrane. So this is a transmembrane protein, this is a transmembrane protein, and that would not be a transmembrane protein. But even if it's not a transmembrane protein, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all, all these eight, they're all integral membrane proteins. So if you remember, those proteins are called integral membrane proteins. And if it spans the whole, it spans the whole membrane, then it's called a transmembrane protein. Transmembrane protein is one type of integral membrane protein. Um, so a quick recap, plasma membrane is our cell membrane. It separates living cells from its non-living boundary. It has something called selective permeability, which means it only wants specific things. And now we know it only wants non-polar molecules and small polar molecules to diffuse through. And um, if we have other any other things that want to go through our cell membrane, we need this thing called our protein channel, right? And phospholipid is what mainly makes up our, um, our, phospholip our, our plasma membrane, and the phospholipids are arranged in a bilayer way. It has a hydrophilic head and, a hydrophob and two hydrophobic tails, right? One head, two tails makes up one phospholipid. It is arranged in a bilayer. And cholesterol is what um, maintains the fluidity and makes sure that it's not too fluid or it's not too tight packing. It's just in the right amount, in the right shape. And the fluid mosaic model basically just states that our membrane is a fluid structure and knows how to move. It can move. The phospholipids can move within the bilayer and um, our membranes must be fluid in order to work properly. 
this is all that I want to talk about today. If you have any questions or um, any concerns, um, leave a comment down below or send me an email and I'll reply as soon as possible. Hope you all can have a great weekend and thank you.